Okay, let's turn this footage from the iPhone 15 Pro Max into this. Let's start with the video settings. If you just want to film your dogs playing and send it to your grandma, you can ignore this. If you want to get more serious, you should shoot in Apple Log. Shooting in Log flattens your image, preserving more details in the shadows and highlights. We want to get as much color information and dynamic range as possible, so go into your camera settings, formats, and scroll all the way down to enable Apple ProRes and choose Log under ProRes codec. This gives you a ton of flexibility in post-production, letting you get the most out of your color grading. color grading. Also, it takes away the digital sharpness, which is typical for phone footage. Next up, exposure. I always slightly underexpose my footage, dialing it down by about one stop. This is crucial with the iPhone 15 Pro. When you expose normally or to the right, like you do on most mirrorless cameras, for example. The phone might crank up the ISO in lower light, introducing noise. Underexposing keeps the ISO low, resulting in cleaner, sharper footage. Just a small adjustment to the exposure can make a big difference in the end result. In this shot, we underexpose by 1.3. And if you prefer to have full control over your exposure, shutter and other settings, you can try the free Blackmagic camera app, which also lets you use a monitoring lot. Now, let's talk about rigging up your iPhone. Small Rig just sent me their new iPhone 15 Pro Max filmmaking cage, which they built in collaboration with Brandon Lee. It lets me attach all sorts of gear, mics, lights, external drives, turning the iPhone into a production-ready camera. It also helps to reduce camera shakes and makes your shots even more stable with the included side handle. Side handle, side handle, side handle. It also helps to reduce shakiness and gives you more grip. I prefer having a stable and smooth shot so I can have full control in post-production when I add a handheld effect to the footage later on. The grip has a detachable wireless remote controller on top that lets you start and stop your recordings, either directly from the grip or from up to 10 meters away. Lighting is key. Poor lighting leads to a high ISO on the iPhone 15 Pro, which we want to avoid. Although I prefer to use natural light, partly because I'm the laziest person in the world, External light can help illuminate scenes better to make it easier for the iPhone to capture a noise-free image. That's why I try to use additional LED lights or practical lights to either just bring up the overall level of the scene or to key light my subject. Good lighting keeps the ISO low, maintaining that crisp, clean image quality and preserves the shadow, mid-tone and highlight information. We just did a video on Small Rig's new RC60B LED light, which also has a built-in battery. It's lightweight, super portable, and fits in your backpack. Finally, color grading. In Final Cut Pro, I start by importing the iPhone footage and turning off any input lots so I have my unedited log footage ready to work with. Then, I apply a custom LUT with one of my iPhone log LUTs to turn the flat log footage into a stylized image, which really makes the colors pop and brings life to the footage. Often, I then add a color board or color wheel to slightly adjust saturation, hue, and contrast. Important, your color corrections should be applied before the stylized lot, otherwise it would just look shit. To fake that chromatic aberration you often see in blockbuster movies, I use M Look from Motion VFX. Finally, I use Dehancer Pro to add halation and grain, giving the footage that final touch of analog film. Analog film. Analog film. And that's basically it. My process for turning iPhone 15 Pro footage into videos that look very close to what you get from a mirrorless camera. Big shout out to Small Rig for sponsoring this video. If you want to learn more about the filmmaking cage for the iPhone 15 Pro Max, just check the links in the description.